close your eyes and watch your breath as it comes in, as it goes out. Try to stay with it as consistently as you can. See if you can trust the mind to stay. And the first you have to watch it very, very carefully, because it, it has a tendency to slip off very easily. In fact, that's how we live our lives. Our minds slip all over the place. To get any work done, we do have to concentrate. And especially if you're going to get work done on the mind, you have to concentrate for long periods of time. As the Buddha said, atta no nato. The self has to be its own mainstay. And the only way it's going to be able to depend on self and be its own mainstay is if you train it. Otherwise, it's tr like trying to de depend on an untrained child. The child has all kinds of moods and emotions and short attention span. You can't really depend on the child to be helpful when, when it's really needed. So you have to train it. So we train it by developing these qualities of mindfulness, alertness, and ardency. Mindful, keeping something in mind. Alertness is watching what's actually going on, and specifically watching what you're doing and what results you're getting from what you're doing. And then ardency means putting your whole heart into this, realizing that the state of your mind is the most important thing you have. So you want to make sure it's good. You want to make sure it's well-trained. As for your other interests, you can put them aside for the time being. This is a time when the mind has to come first. It spends the day looking after the body, looking after all kinds of other things. Very little time looking after itself, or here's a chance to look after itself. It's like having a tool, like a knife. If you want the knife to work well, you have to look after it. You can't spend all the time just using, using, using the knife, and then tossing it away in the drawer when you don't use it. You've got to sharpen it, you've got to oil it to make sure it doesn't get rusty. Then you put it away. In the same way that the mind has to be trained so that when you really need it, you can you have a sharp knife that cuts right through things. Otherwise, the mind just keeps cutting and cutting and cutting. After a while, it can't cut anymore. It just slams against things because its blade is, is dull. So train the mind so you, it'll be there ready when you need it. And that way you can learn to trust it. And when you can trust your mind, then you really can be your own mainstay. We take refuge in the Buddha, and the Dharma, and the Sangha as examples. It's not like the Buddha is going to come and catch us when we fall. It's he teaches us how, how not to fall, and if we do fall, this he tells us how to hit the ground so we don't hurt ourselves. So we can look after ourselves. We have that chant every day. May all living beings look after themselves with ease. May I look after myself with ease. It's the skills by which we can look after ourselves. That was the Buddha's greatest gift to us. He showed us that it can be done, and he tells us how he did it. Now it's simply up for us to follow in his footsteps, to get the work done on our mind. So we don't need outside examples to be a refuge. The mind can be its own refuge at that point. <laughs>